Good morning on this Palm Sunday. Would you stand with me and worship and raise our palms to heaven, amen? To the King of glory and light, all praises. To the only giver of life, our maker. The gates are open wide, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Come see what love has done, amazing. He bought us with his blood, our Savior. The cross is overcome, we worship you. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, and we proclaim that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you did, God, and we thank you that we're able to tap in to the power and the healing and everything that you offer, Father God. We can tap into that as we live our lives, God, through prayer, through praise, or what, for reading of your word, God. We just thank you for that ability, Father, in your precious, precious name. Amen. Hi, BSCC. It's a joy to have you joining us in worship, either here on campus or online. We'd love to connect with you. If you'll scan the QR code on the screen or the seat in front of you, you can check in, fill out a prayer request, and much more. If this is a welcome desk, we'd like to give you a gift as a way of saying thank you for being here. It's not too late to sign up to attend one of the Faith Foundation 101 classes that are starting this week. This is the study that we're asking all BSCCers to participate in as we kick off our new discipleship pathway. In addition to this study, Financial Peace University begins this Wednesday night for those who want practical and biblical instruction on budgeting, debt reduction, and retirement planning. April 4 through 8 is our spring personal encounter retreat. This retreat from Thursday night through Sunday afternoon focuses on giving you time and space to rest, reflect, and reconnect with God. Every week as a part of our worship, we invite you to give an extra dollar to a specific need called One for One. The past two weeks, our One for One was for a couple that lost their 18-month-old daughter due to complications from surgery. Because of your generosity, we're able to bless this family with $2,300. Praise God. This week's One for One will go to a single mother who lost her job shortly after purchasing her home. She had some savings to cover the bills for a while, but now is barely making ends meet. She just recently found a job but hasn't gotten paid yet. You can give to this need online or at the One for One boxes by the doors. Thank you.
Last fall, we began a two-year generosity and vision initiative called Multiply. A goal of this initiative is for BSCC to multiply our impact for Jesus in Blue Springs, Kansas City, and the world. Brian and I had a chance to attend a conference earlier this month. It was all about churches reaching people for Jesus through church planting and multiplication. We wanted to pass on some of the things that stood out to us. Brian, what are a, a couple of learnings that you appreciated most from the conference? Yeah, so I, I really loved the energy of the conference. Everyone who attended there was a similar mindset and focus, and that was to learn together ways that the church can be effective in multiplication and to grow disciples who grow disciples all over the globe. And while the main sessions were great, had a great time, I actually uh, got the most out of the breakout sessions. I learned from experts in the field of multi-site development for churches, how to strengthen and continue to develop a multi-site culture within your church. Uh, I learned that the church is how, how the church is shifting uh, for the next generation. And I also learned how churches are starting to use AI uh, to expand the kingdom for the Lord. Uh, it was a great conference. I had a great time. Great. Glad to hear it. One of the things that stood out to me is the importance that needs to be placed on leadership development. In my notes, I wrote, the key to movement is an infrastructure of apprenticeship. What would happen at BSCC if every leader was developing two new leaders? Something else that was emphasized at the conference is having a dream so big that it makes us dependent on God. It was suggested that we take whatever vision we currently have and multiply it 100 times. Wow! Something that I heard several times is that nothing happens regarding growth in God's kingdom unless it is saturated with prayer. So let's keep praying and let's keep trusting God. Brian, what else would you like to share with us from the conference that you think would help us in being able to multiply our impact for Jesus? Yeah, well, I learned uh, that we are at a great starting point for a multi-site ministry. Uh, we learned uh, that having an invite culture at your church is one of the key components uh, for growing in this way. Uh, we need to have a culture of discipleship and intentionality. Uh, we'll need to develop a strategy for growing into a multi-site ministry. And of course, on top of it all is prayer. Uh, and that God will continue to do a good work through BSCC. Uh, grow, go, going multi-site will definitely grow us and stretch us in new ways, but it'll also multiply our impact in our community and the world. One other thing I would like to share is a challenge that we were given. It's to change the question from how do we grow our church to how do we multiply God's kingdom. That's an important distinction that I want to make sure we recognize as we move forward together in this multiply journey. If you're on this journey with us, like Brian and his family and like Tammy and me, thank you. We are very grateful. Be encouraged by what God is doing through BSCC. If you're newer to our church, I want to invite you to join us in this journey. Every offering that is given to BSCC this year and next year is a part of this Multiply vision. To learn more about this initiative, you can go to our website at bscc.org and click on the Multiply tab. Thank you. Today's message will be presented through the children's musical, Nick at Night. This wonderful play within a play weaves John's account of Nicodemus with the mystery of spiritual rebirth and renewal. I'm excited for all of us to hear this powerful message through this musical. We ask you to please hold your applause until the end of the musical. This will help with the transitions between each act. And now we present Nick at Night. Your programs. Thank you. Harper, Mackenzie, this is our hostess for today's play. She'll be introducing each act. So you've already seen it? Just last week, and today I brought my two nieces. Listen to the orchestra. Yeah, we've never been to a musical before. Well, your aunt is very nice to bring you. Enjoy the show. What 
What's the musical about, Aunt Ellen? It's a mystery, Harper. A mystery? That's my favorite genre of book to read. Right now, I'm in the middle of a Nancy Drew book. My friends and I love, yeah, my friends and I love to watch those whodunits on TV where they get you all confused, then unravel the mystery at the end. Hey, why did it get so quiet? Shh, the play's about to begin. But what's it called? Nick at Night. I'll gladly be for this play about Nicodemus from John chapter 3. Our story unfolds into three separate acts, each one beginning at night. In act one, we see our Lord Jesus resting beneath the stars so bright. His followers are near to attend to his needs, including some children we'll meet. But when who should appear? Friend or foe? It's Nicodemus, the chief Pharisee. Becca, it's too dark to see anything. Wait a minute, that's Nicodemus. Are you sure, Sarah? Nicodemus. The superstar of the Sanhedrin. The biggest cog in the synagogue. The brightest light on the Pharisee's wheel. <laughs> but, why would Nicodem but why would Nicodemus be coming here to see Jesus, and so late at night? Yeah, Nebby, the Pharisees don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. In fact, they're always complaining that he's broken one of their laws. Which one? Number one or 651? Yeah, thou shalt not swat a fly or thou shalt not swallow a gnat. Now, Becca, remember, the true law was given by God, not to make us look holy, but to make us look to God for our holiness. It's God's grace, not our goodness. Can't the Pharisees see that? What you see depends on whose eyes you're looking through.
Nebi. Nicodemus is coming this way. The Sanhedrin would have a camel. <laughs> no wonder he's come at night. <laughs> oh, excuse me, children. I, I'm looking for a very important man. He's known as rabbi or teacher. That would be Jesus, sir, resting over by the fire. That common-looking man? No, no, you, you don't understand. This man is called the Messiah. Yes, sir, that would be Jesus. No, no, this is a very special man. He's known as master, healer. That would be my Jesus, sir. I guess I'm confused. You see, I am a very important man. I am a teacher of teachers, a father of many sons and a master of many servants. And yet, you're telling me that the answer to my question lies in this ordinary man? With all respect, sir, Jesus is no ordinary man. But he's the answer to every question. Father's dad. Who's a shepherd to the shepherd when he's lost a lamb? Who's the help the help the when there's just too much to do? That would be my Jesus. That's who. That would be my Jesus. That's who. Who's the master master? Who's the king of kings? Who's a leader to the leader when they're leader? Introduce you to Jesus. I believe you already have. Excuse me while I go introduce myself. Look at them, Sarah. It's as if Jesus has been waiting for Nicodemus all along. Sure seems that way. Let's listen and see what this Nick at night wants. What's Nicodemus saying? Yeah, what's Nicodemus saying? He says, Nicodemus knows Jesus came from God or else he couldn't have performed all those miracles. He's got that right. Jesus has healed the sick, raised the dead, and fed the multitudes. What's Jesus saying? He says, no one will see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. But can't Nicodemus understand being born again? Yeah, Nebby. He might believe a miracle he can see, but a miracle he can't see? Nicodemus has got to be clueless. So what's Jesus saying now? Yeah, what's Jesus saying now? 
He's telling the snake story? The snake story? You know from the book of Numbers, when the children in Israel were dying of snake bites in the desert? As a teacher, Nicodemus should know all about that. Remember Moses lifted a snake upon a rod and said that everyone who looks up at it looks up at it and had faith in God would be saved. Now Jesus is saying that someday he will be lifted up and anyone who believes in him will have eternal life. So Jesus is telling Nicodemus what he told us. Yes, and isn't it a wonderful thing that God's love can speak to every heart? Son, Jesus, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son, John 3, 17 through 18. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people of the darkness more than their more than the light, for their actions were evil, John 3, 19. But those who do what right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants, John 3, 21. John 3, 16 means we can be born again. Will Nicodemus reach out in faith or return to his comfort zone, okay, to his status among his ruling class? We'll find out after this brief intermission. Stand and stretch if you choose. Just don't wander off too far. You might miss a bit of act two. Can we talk now? Yes, this is the intermission. So what happened, Aunt Ellen? Did Nicodemus believe in Jesus? Was he born again? Well, Harper, what does it mean to be born again? Uh, I don't think I can explain it. Well, that's what makes it a mystery. It certainly does make it a mystery when someone becomes a brand new person. You mean like those witness protection programs where the guy on TV gets plastic surgery, then he gets a new name, then they move him to a new... No, Harper, those are just changes on the outside. Becoming born again is a change from the inside out. Not becoming an improved version of the old you, but becoming a brand new creation. I'm sorry, Aunt Ellen, but now I'm clueless. Mm, let me see, how can I explain this? I know. If I take my program and I pinch it in the middle like this, what does that look like? A butterfly. Yes, and sometimes people use a butterfly to explain a brand new creation. Little caterpillar was crawling on the ground. Crawling on that dirty old ground. So low he couldn't see very much around. He couldn't see much around. So he climbed into a tree and thought what a wonderful thing it would be if I could soar with wings into the sky. To be born again, changed from within with power. Caterpillar sat there thinking this Just thinking thoughts like this That worm was turned into a chrysalis No cocoon but a chrysalis God had touched that tiny thing And he burst forth with butterfly wings A new creation he knew what it was To be born again Changed from within With power Pillar 
flowers and butterflies are bugs. Just bugs. But humans are created like God above. Yet here's what we can learn from butterflies. When Jesus comes into your life, Little caterpillar crawling on the ground Crawling on that dirty old ground You could soar above and be heaven bound We could soar ever more heaven bound Look up to your father and friend And ask him to forgive your sins And make a new creation out of you To be born again Changed from within With power So Aunt Ellen, did Nicodemus believe, wait, did, um, did God do that for Nicodemus? Well, that's part of the mystery, Harper. God's plan is his heavenly kingdom. He doesn't make us be born again. It's your choice to accept Jesus as your savior, just as it was Nicodemus' choice. So what'd he choose? So what'd he choose? Shh, here comes the hostess. Maybe she'll tell us. Time has passed as we begin Act 2, but the hour is still the same. It's nighttime as the Sanhedrin meets, but is Nicodemus part of their game? These rulers want to arrest Jesus. The Pharisees were seldom fair, but will there be a different outcome because our Nick at night is there? Nicodemus, Law 453 says we can't begin a meeting of the Sanhedrin until we make sure the religious leaders are here. Oh, all right. Phil Pharisee. Here. Here. Uh, Frank Pharisee. Yo. And Francis Pharisee. Present. Now to the problem at hand. This Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. That's speaking out law number 12. We've seen what Fred Pharisee saw, and more. That prophet spoke to a woman, a Samaritan woman. That's b number 23 and 82. He not only talks to sinners, he eats with them and says their sins are forgiven. That's speaking 118, 246, and 398. I saw what Francis Pharisee saw and heard even worse. What did this Galilean say, Fred? You will look for me, but you will not find me. And he said, where I am, you cannot come. What nonsense is this? Where I am, you cannot come? Uh, but is it really nonsense? Maybe Jesus was talking about going to heaven and that the hypocrites wouldn't. Really, Nicodemus, if anyone were headed to heaven, it would be us, the Pharisees. Yes, we're better than everyone. Why can't you tell by looking at us we're practically perfect? Ah, oh, here's a man. The Roman guard, as you requested, sir. Did you arrest this imposter? Guide, did you arrest this imposter? No, sir. Jesus has broken no law, sir. And by my account, no one ever spoke the way this man does, sir. Ha! He may have tricked you, soldier, but I'm sure none of us Pharisees believe this Jesus. Right, Nicodemus? Nicodemus? Nick? Nick? 
Does our law condemn anyone before, before first hearing them out? Hear him out. I'd like to hear him out, out of town. Come on, Phil, let's go. <coughs> yes. And mm. On our way, we'll discuss our Pharisee philosophy of life. Permission to ask you something, sir? At ease, soldier. What is it? Well, are you a secret disciple, a believer in Jesus, or do you just like to annoy your friends by taking up for him? No, I did speak with Jesus. You have? What did you learn about him? Well, it was more like, what did I learn about Nicodemus? And what was that, sir? That even with all my education, my status, and everything else, I learned that Nicodemus was lost in the darkness of sin. So tell me, sir, what happened? I was too ashamed to meet him in the day. And so when evening came, I slipped away. But before I saw his face, he was looking into mine. And even in the nighttime, I could see him shine. I was in the dark till I met the light. My cold, cold heart. I was in the dark, still my eyes could see that even in the dark, he was loving me. The dark is like the night. A life without the Lord A heart that's filled with sin That God can't ignore But when Jesus fills your heart His light comes shining through He drives away the darkness And will make you new I was in the dark Till I met the light that cold, cold heart turned to Jesus Christ. I was in the dark, still my eyes could see that even in the dark, He was loving me. Even in the dark, Your secret safe with me, sir. And I pray it becomes your secret, too. Yes, sir. A secret disciple? In a moment, we'll see if Nick keeps his secret as we move to Act 3. I've heard of a secret agent before, but never a secret disciple. But how can Nicodemus be a Christian if he didn't want everyone to know? That's a good question, Harper. Are you a Christian, Harper? You know I am. Yeah, but you never invite your friends to church. And when the pastor asked you to read on Children's Sunday, you pretended to have laryngitis. So, so what if, <clears throat> so what if I did? So, Nicodemus was a secret disciple and Harper too.
So Harper, as you can see, some of us are tempted to be secret disciples. And like Nicodemus, we're tempted to keep our faith a secret for a while. But when it came time to stand up for uh, Nic or Jesus, Nicodemus was willing to. Shh, here comes the hostess. Yeah, uh, here comes the hostess for act three. Welcome back to our play in three acts, the third of which starts rather sadly. The Pharisees arrest Jesus. He was mocked and beaten badly. And though our Savior had done nothing wrong, they plotted and put him to death. And now Sarah, Nebi, and Becca are alone with nothing but his promises left. <laughs> I know how you feel. Oh, Nicodemus! I brought ointments for his body. My friend Joseph provided that too. between two criminals and we buried him like a key. The bells. The, the bells. Look, it shows us there Arimathea. He's, He's coming risen. from the tomb. Nicodemus, Jesus is risen from the dead. What? Oh, Joseph, we're no longer disciples by night. The day of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. It's here. Hallelujah.
And now our play ends on the happiest note. Jesus waits to welcome us into his new heavenly home. And what is the mystery of Nick at Night's new birth? The answer is that Jesus died for everyone on earth, the godly and the righteous, like our hero Nicodemus, or the criminals and the hypocrites, the selfish and the meanest. And what a mystery that is, that the wicked and the nice, through grace, both receive a brand new birth when they trust in Jesus Christ. Undeserved, it can't be earned, but yet it is easily explained. It's God's free gift to you and me by trusting in his name. So the mystery is that everyone needs to be born again? That's why God sent Jesus. That's right, Mackenzie. Yeah. So as we've learned from Nicodemus in this play with three parts, there are three things we must do to trust in God with all of our hearts. So as we close, we'll share with you these three simple facts and pray like Nick at night, your life is seen through these three acts. Let's give them another round of applause. They did such a great, great job.
Our children did an incredible job of telling us about the life of Nicodemus. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Nicodemus. He only shows up three times in the Bible. They're all in the Gospel of John. But in his life that we learn about, we see that he is on a journey that I believe each and every one of us is on. From seeker to secret disciple to courageous believer, we are all at some point on this journey. And I would encourage you to spend a little bit of time thinking about what the kids have shared with us this morning and look at where you might be. Because the key is, is to be just like Nicodemus and keep moving forward and keep becoming more and more like Jesus to become a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, we don't know anything about Nicodemus outside these three message, mentions in the Gospel of John. If you want to look them up today, they're in chapters 3, 7, and 19. But according to church tradition, after Nicodemus publicly stood up and courageously declared his belief in Jesus Christ by helping Joseph of Arimathea prepare Jesus' body and bury Jesus' body, things changed for Nicodemus. He was kicked off the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. He was banished from Jerusalem. He lost his position. He lost his wealth. But church tradition says he was baptized by Peter and John and that he lived out his life as a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's my hope and prayer for each and every one of us who are here this morning, that we too will live out our lives as fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Now, maybe you are ready this morning to step out of the shadows of being a secret disciple, and you want to publicly proclaim your faith and obedience to Jesus Christ by being baptized into his death, his burial, and resurrection. If that's something you would like to do, or if you would like to learn more about, please come see me and talk to me in the lobby after the service, or you can talk to Tom at the Connection Point or Matt at the Welcome Desk, or if you are joining us online, or if you just have to leave immediately, you can talk to any of our ministers. You can message us, connect with us through the website. Another way that we publicly proclaim our faith and obedience to Jesus Christ is by taking communion together. The Apostle Paul, in his first letter to the church at Corinth, told his readers that when we take communion, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. If you're here on campus, I hope you picked up one of these little cups on your way in. If you're joining us online, please grab whatever you have handy because what it is doesn't really matter nearly as much as what these things represent. Because when we gather together and we are in this room and we take communion together, we are telling everybody who watches us when we take the bread, which represents the body of Christ, we are proclaiming that we believe that Jesus Christ came literally and historically and that he died on the cross for our sins. If you believe this, please join me in taking the bread. And when we take the juice, we are proclaiming that we believe that Jesus shed his blood on the cross to wash away our sins, to wash away our guilt, to wash away our shame, not because of anything that we have done or could do, but because of what Jesus did for us when he died for us on the cross. If you believe this, proclaim it with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just so very thankful that you have loved us enough to send your son Jesus to die on the cross, to pay the price for our sins so that we can be with you forever, to be where you made us to be, to be the people that you made us to be. Father, we are thankful for the example of Nicodemus that our children shared with us this morning. And Father, I pray that each and every one of us will take this to heart 
that we will never stop seeking you, but that we will step out of the shadows and the darkness of being a secret disciple to fully follow you and proclaim our faith in you, Father. Lord, help us to take this with us this week. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, another way that we can proclaim our faith and obedience in Jesus Christ is exactly what you're doing here this morning. When we gather together with fellow believers to worship God, we are proclaiming our faith. And when we invite our friends and our families and our neighbors to join us, we are sharing our faith. And this is Palm Sunday. This is Holy Week. And next weekend, we have multiple opportunities for you to be back here to worship and to bring your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, random people that you pick up on the street. Anybody, we welcome and want you to bring them back next week. Make sure they come willingly. Kidnapping is not good. Um, it all kicks off, though, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock with our family Easter event. Our children's minister, Christina Warren, is going to be leading our families. You parents, grandparents, guardians, anybody who's bringing kids, she's going to lead you through a series of activities and games that will allow you to share and experience the meaning of of Easter with your children in a way that they're going to understand. If you've got kids, you're going to want to be here Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Then at noon in our lobby, we are hosting a, an adult special needs Easter egg hunt. Now, adults with special needs are often an overlooked demographic. And these people are really smarter than most of us because they didn't bother to grow up. They still have fun in their lives. And so we are hosting an Easter egg hunt just for adults 18 and over with special needs. If you know of any of these, please invite them. This is a special event that's just for them. Then at 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon, we are having the first of four identical Easter worship services. Uh, there's going to be a full children's ministry during that. And then afterwards, we are hosting an Easter egg hunt for kids up through fifth grade. I would tell you when it starts, except I don't know. Nobody knows because it starts after the service. It depends on how much Dave talks next week, okay? <laughs> You're just going to have to be here. And we really are asking for 200 BSCC adults to come and be here for that service. And then another 200 BSCCers to be at the 8 o'clock service to free up chairs in the 9.30 and 11 o'clock service next week for guests and families, because that's when most of the guests and such will come. So if you can come, please do. All four services are going to be identical. There's going to be full children's ministry at the 4, 9, 30, and 11, and there will be nursery at 8 o'clock. Dave is going to be bringing an Easter message on how the resurrected Jesus is able to transform our lives. This is what Nicodemus experienced. This is what you're going to want to experience next week. I hope to see you back next weekend. Have a wonderful week.